hey everybody welcome back to the channel in this video i'll show you the build process of the e46 turbo sedan and also the thought process behind that car this car started its life as a 320 diesel and obviously we acquired it and immediately started stripping it and removing all the glue and sound deadening and all those nasty things inside the cabin and outside and then i grabbed one of our leftover engines m50 to mock it up in this chassis because the iron engine was never used in this car so we made our own tubular engine mounts we made our own gearbox mounts and all those things to fit it nicely next step was fabrication making the roll cage six point roll cage uh, we always use a very high grade of steel and i spent a lot of time fabricating the roll cage feet as you can see in 3d these are fitting very nicely then we cut off the front end of the car in order to make a tubular front end for a variety of reasons and one of the weak points of the chassis is the suspension domes on the front side for which we have our own plates which I welded in and in the interior we placed the handbrake, the shifter, switch panels, relay board and all those things and already mocked that up and fitted all the attachments for the fire extinguisher and fuel lines and all those kinds of things. Then obviously the car was painted. I painted it myself this time. And then we started working on the body kit this was an existing kit that i modified because i wanted the car to have the exact same dimensions as the v8 coupe because then we can swap out all the suspension parts and all the wheels and all that stuff and for the sedan there's not that much available uh, jeff and me you can see over here making the hood vent which is a very important part that i always use to get rid of the heat under the hood so we first made that in a spare standard hood and then transferred it to the fiberglass hood then we made all the ancillaries and all the small stuff on the engine which we obviously already did before paint this is how the exhaust turned out the first time we're doing a hood exit exhaust on one of my own cars and this is for instance making the coolant filler cap for the reservoir which needs to be in a very very high position to bleed correctly and here we are making the ducting for the rear mounted radiator since this car um, is a turbo it has the intercooler in the front so i wanted to have the radiator in the back and i thought very long and hard on how i wanted to do it we actually started making prototypes for this on a different e46 chassis already in 2016 2017 because i don't really like the pickup truck like the cut off half rear window style so i ended up putting it over here where it draws its cold air from normally uh, where the rear passengers would be sitting so there's two holes in the floor as you can see and we made a ducting out of aluminum obviously this is um, not the most simple way to do it but i like it when the car still looks like a car from the profile i don't like any big scoops or weird things and to be honest we tested this thoroughly it works very 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 well you actually don't need um, air from driving in order to cool it the fans do all the work they are regulated by a very very good military grade fan regulator and even on the dyno on some parts of the mapping we didn't even have to turn on the dyno fan it just stayed 87 degrees perfectly well and it vents all the hot air out of the trunk as you will see in the, the rest of this video working with an old engine you want to make sure that everything is true and correct on that block so we had it completely machined line board decked everything that you can imagine that's possible on these engines and obviously building it back together with the best hardware original arp stuff all the pistons and stuff obviously forged it had a 2.8 crank which is a forged crank which was completely balanced and uh, made sure that everything fitted together perfectly and there was no imbalance in the block whatsoever i like the 2.8 because it's 
still a reasonably okay stroke so you're not increasing the piston speed or you're increasing the conduit angle too much which i don't really like if you go over a 2.8 i wanted to have all the lines and hoses that attach to the engine to be an which is obviously very easy if you want to change things out everything on the inside of the engine is original bmw brand new so all the sprockets chains guides nuts bolts everything we use the 3.2 m3 s50 tandem oil pump with two pickups this is actually an engine that we built before we built lots of these engines for turbo applications so it was certainly a block that we have a few tips and tricks up our sleeve in and i really like these engines because they are very light and they have a very good head design for turbocharging then we fitted the suspension obviously feel suspension best bang for buck if you ask me makes the car very very fast obviously it needs no introduction wise fab lock kit on the e46 which gives a huge amount of lock and a lot of control and a lot of adjustability it was time to do all the small stuff so we fit the lexan windows carbon fiber in uh, door panels all kinds of super small things i made the headlights because they didn't fit anymore with the intercooler setup so i made led uh, headlights obviously the wiring is always a lot of work i have a particular way of making wiring um, i don't see that used too much anymore because everybody uses pdms but i still like the normal very simple easy to do wiring and i always make a huge booklet with it which explains which contact is what and what connector goes where and how that all works then we weighed the car with me in it it turned out to be 1331 and an almost perfect weight balance a lot of time was spent on the dyno getting the setup perfectly right with all the boost levels and i'm extremely happy with how that turned out so we're almost there obviously the wiring needs to be tidied up when everything is done and perfect we ended up with a simple cheap tablet setup which displays all the sensors that the ecu sees and all the information for the driver is doubled up by original autometer gauges as you can see we still need to make the ventilation for the cam cover right now that's just a silicone hose temporary fix the up pipe that goes through the hood the tile waste gate and chase base really came through for us with a lot of their fantastic components their power steering fluid reservoir which is a common problem on bmw but not with this one because it allows you to use an lines their filler neck which is fantastic for remote radiators so you have a high point in the engine bay to fill on both sides and it also accommodates npt sensors you see the custom bottom mounted hull set this is the quick release or juice fasteners if we want to work on the radiator or the pump there you can see how we are moving the um, fire extinguisher and electrical lines to the back and this is the filler neck the highest point in the whole system the expansion tank for the coolant system i'm thinking about cutting a hole in the window but right now we have never had to change anything on that coolant reservoir so it works perfectly fine the way it is so if i don't absolutely have to cut that i won't this is the tank setup obviously atl fuel cell bosch 44 pumps and the fans are located over here this is like the most cfm flowing spals there you can see the fire extinguisher coming into the rear area and that's where the nozzle is so it sprays on the fuel system if we pull the lever that's where the hot air comes out that's our standard switch panel which you can buy on the website which has the push fuses which means that the fuse is also used as a switch the chase base handbrake which i'm super happy with and there we have the autometer gauges there's two lambda sensors one of them controls the ecu the other one is completely standalone which is that one that you can see over here i like to have all the relays in reach for the driver so if something weird happens you can swap them out or whatever it's actually a very comfortable seating position this is the air jack um, point where you put the lens of the air jack in and raise or lower the car if you pull it out towards yourself then it lowers 
a car again the standard position of the air jacks is obviously in so if there's no air pressure they'll stay in you can see the dual caliper setup which is the setup of my preference with the feel suspension strut in the back wise fab arms this i use a top arm to accommodate more room for the axle if we have to work on that because we do some prototyping with that this is the inside of the airbox for the radiator here you can see the shaft that we made the wise fab bushings in the subframe this is a 210 diff and here you can see the lines that we made we use 20 an and as much as we could uh, aluminum tubing which you can see follows the trajectory of the car without having any low points so they could rip open recent thing that we did was fit a scavenge pump because the turbo is pretty low mount we had no problems with it on the dyno but i didn't want to make any future problems for myself so i just fitted it um, and um, see how that works obviously the wise fab offset control arm this is a newer design and obviously there's the whole set hx35 turbo that we are using you can see those scavenger lines over there super happy with the turbo which is made by rolf ter stege and there we can see the rest of the layout on the car that's the air jack as you can see the standard position is in it has a spring inside so as long as that spring is not broken it will always remain up and you really need to remove it to break that spring so that's impossible that's one of the attachment points for the seat belts which i always spend a lot of time on getting that perfectly right there's the one piece prop shaft which is a telescopic part you should never completely hard mount it if you run this type of transmission flange that's one of the attachment points for the coolant hoses which end up in the engine bay using an20 flexible lines because that reduces the heat in the engine bay because it doesn't as emit as much heat as aluminum tubing and obviously it's more flexible if you have to work on the car or remove the engine and you can just hold them upwards so the coolant doesn't all drop out as everybody knows, I run YFAP for a long time. I'm super happy with the kit on the E46. It's fantastically easy to drive. It has a lot of auto center, gives you a lot of grip, and you can actually adjust it in many, many ways. I couldn't actually ask for more, and obviously super happy to have Feel on board as a sponsor. The guys, Mike and Odie from California, who make fantastic shocks over there this is the brilliant thing of the chase base setup you can run an lines on the power steering setup which means no more leaks and super easy controlling the lines and making them in the back you can see that we are not running our own axles we are actually running bmw axles with some of our prototype components in them to run some tests and see what happens that's the other air jack obviously and you can see that um the area where the tank sits is nice and flush with the bumper back to the dash the way i made this is that all the green lights on the right side the four of them are supposed to be on when the engine is running so that's a very quick reference for the driver if all those four lights are on then you're doing well and you can see all the other things the wiper ventilation the lights there's three access points which we can use for other things and obviously the nitrous indication light i like to run bulkhead fittings for brakes and everything as you can see over here here you can see that we lowered the uh, pickup point of the lower arm a little bit within legal um, rules and this is how the 210 diff is mounted we made two plates with huge like one m16 one m14 bolt which are offset compared to each other works really well in the past we had it up to like five six hundred horsepower no problems at all so that's the car i hope you guys like it there's still a lot of small things to do mainly cosmetic stuff and getting all the wires um, tucked and neat and it's a super comfortable car it runs really really well it's almost like a 325 to drive when it's off boost it's pretty high compression so it's very simple it's not very leggy um, so i expect it to be a super comfortable car you can rent it if you want so hit us up if you want to rent this car mm -hmm.